random vector is just a vector of random variables. This x in, in the standard is a column vector. Yeah, they would look like this. X might have n random variables. The other random vector might have m random variables. Uh, the mean of a random vector or the expected value of a random vector is the vector of the expected values of the individual random variables. Um, this is just more notation. I mean, since, since, since the standard is a column vector, we could write it like this, write it horizontally and then say it's that transpose. Uh, Need to know a little bit about matrices. Um, the covariance of two random vectors before it was just, just a simple covariance between like scalar random variables was just this product. Now we put this transpose here. So this will be a column vector. This will be a row vector. When you multiply them, you get a matrix. Um, that will look like this. It's all these individual co covariances between individual random variables. But this tells you how to lay them out in a matrix. Um, you could talk about the covariance of a single random vector. It's that same covariance with itself. So its, it's definition is this thing. So here's how the matrix lays out. Well, if you go back to covariances and correlation coefficients, it would look like this in terms of standard deviations and correlation coefficients. Um, and I should point out here, if, if all these, if all the individual elements, all the individual random vectors are independent of each other, and all these correlation coefficients would be zero. And all you'd have is, is a, what do you call it, a diagonal matrix. It'd be all the variances down the main diagonal. And this would be a square matrix now. Um, and all zeros off the main diagonal. That's if everything's independent of each other. You only have two random variables in your vector. So I'm kind of switching notation a little bit. Here, X and Y are just plain old random variables, not vectors. The vector is X on top, Y on bottom in this example. So here's what that covariance of that random vector would look like. And since there's only two variables, we don't need to put the subscripts on the uh, uh, correlation coefficient. So this would be what the covariance matrix looks like if you're only talking about two a, a vector of two random variables. It's the two independent variances that down the, down the main diagonal and then these things on the off diagonals. These are always symmetric matrices, by the way, when it's the covariance of a single random vector. Uh, Covariance is, is a symmetric matrix. If you need a matrix to review, see my NMath 8 course. It's too much to go over from scratch here. Um, a linear transformation. What if you've got a random vector X here, a matrix A, a vector B here, and you get a Y out of it, which could be another random vector. And you're given the mean and covariance of the random vector x. And we're given that. What are the mean and covariance of the random vector y? Let's see, the mean, the expected value of y. Here's what y is. Use linearity property. The expectation is a linear operator. So that's just expected. It's just this, and you end up with a fairly simple formula for 
what the mean of the output is, what the mean of y is. It's a times the mean of x plus b. That's pretty easy. The covariance, I won't go through every line here. By definition, it will mean this, but you can plug in what y is in there, and it just means this. Multiply all that out, you get this. And if you know a little bit about matrix multiplication, um, I won't go through it all. You end up, anyway, you end up with this. So we now have a neat little formula for the covariance of this output one. Pre-multiplied by A and post-multiplied by A transpose. Um, I'll let you pause the video if you want to go through this or see my notes. So here's the summary. We have formulas for computing the mean and variance of Y, covariance of Y. Here's an example of that. Let's say I have random variable X1 with a mean of zero, random variable X2 with a mean of 10. We have variances of four and nine respectively, and a correlation coefficient of half. Find the mean and covariance of Z, where Z is this. A convenient way to do this is to use that formula for matrices. Even though this Z is going to be just a scalar, just a single random variable, it's best to treat, treat it as a vector. So we're going to write this in matrix form. Z equals AX plus B. The A is just one and a minus five. A is a matrix, but it's a, what is it, a one by two. Here's the random variable, random vector rather. And B is another scalar, it's just 30. The mean of X, remember it was zero and 10. And this covariance is gonna look like this. And we had the two variances, they were four and nine. So we got a four and nine there. And what are these off diagonals? Remember, it's symmetric, so we only need to calculate one. It's correlation coefficient half times their standard deviations, which are just the square roots of the variances. So there is the covariance of X random vector. So there's what Z is. So now we have everything. The mean is this. Now we just do some matrix arithmetic and get an answer, minus 20. And the variance of Z is, um, we just had a formula for that. This guy. And now here is our A. We multiply, post multiply times the C of X, and that was this guy. So this is just matrix multiplication. I won't go through that. Let's see, the last one is four minus 15, or minus 11, three minus 45. Anyway, you get the number, there we go. Um, this would also work if the left side were another random vector. Uh, in this case, even though Z was a scalar, a convenient way to do this was using the matrix relationships on the previous charts. Uh, but it would also work if Z is a random vector. Um, and that's enough for this. Um, 